It goes without saying that in aviation, if something goes wrong, the consequences are very serious. But in this episode of the Micropilot, I'm going to show you what we do to train for those worst case scenarios. Okay, practice auto rotation. Three, two, one, go. Good, keep going, keep going, level. Yeah, boy. Okay. Very nice. Hey. There, okay. there you go. That didn't feel as bad as a four. That was it really was. good. Okay. Really nice. Thank you. Cool, let's do one more. Okay. Hello, guys, and welcome back to another episode of The Micropilot. Now, it makes sense for those of you out there who are particularly nervous flyers to think about the things that can and rarely do go wrong when flying. So if you think about it, nearly everything in your training is geared towards making you a safe and competent pilot. You know, at the end of the day, getting your license means that you're certified to fly the aircraft safely and effectively. So during your training, you're going to go through probably the main types of emergencies you could come across and you have to fully understand everything else that could go wrong. So today I'm going to take you through possibly the three worst emergencies that we could experience in the helicopter. Plus I'll briefly talk over some of the other things that could potentially go wrong. Now in my opinion the three worst things that could go wrong in a helicopter are if your engine fails on you, if you have a fire or if you lose control of your tail rotor. Now, the Golden Bible, in terms of what you should do in an emergency, will be found in your aircraft's POH, which is your Pilot Operating Handbook. Now, I'll show you little segments of the Cabri G2 POH whilst um, we're talking about some of the emergencies that I'm going to take you through and some footage from my actual emergency training whilst I'm out flying. Now, an engine failure in a multi-engine aircraft isn't so much of a problem as it would be in a single-engined aircraft, purely because you've got another engine there to help back you up and at least power you on to somewhere where you can make a safe landing. Now, obviously, it's more of a problem with a single-engined aircraft, like the Cabri G2. And contrary to popular belief, when an, a helicopter loses its engine, it doesn't drop towards the ground quicker than a brick house full of bricks, okay? It does its own equivalent to gliding to the ground like a normal aeroplane called the auto rotation. Now, effectively, what this means is when the engine quits, the rotor blades are still free to spin around. Now, what we do is we make the aircraft descend through the air, and the action of the air moving through the rotor blades helps keep them spinning, okay? As we get close to the ground, we flare up to kill off the forward airspeed that we have, pushing even more air through the rotor blades so they spin up a little faster. And then just before we touch the ground, we pull up on the collective, which drains most of the energy out of the rotor blades, but that puts a load of um, force downwards, and then we cushion our landing. Now that was a very brief example of how an auto rotation works, but there's multiple videos out there on YouTube as to how they work. So I recommend you go check those out. But now I'm going to show you some footage of a lesson I had the other day with my instructor James, where we're doing auto rotations down into the airfield. So for this auto rotation, my instructor James has full control of the throttle and after a cure of 3, 2, 1, go, I lower the collective, introduce a bit of left pedal and then aim for 60 knots and then focus on the approach. Okay, practice auto rotation, 3, 2, 1, go. Okay. Hey, throttle's closed. Okay, 60 knots. Collective. Okay, checks. Runway's clear. I'm happy. 60 knots. Throttle's open. It is a bit low. Okay. Lock me down. Rescue on the way vacated. Okay. Rescue on the way, Good. Keep going. Keep going. Level. Yeah, boy. Okay. Very nice. Hey. There, okay. there you go. 
That didn't feel as bad as I thought. That was it really would. good. Okay. Really nice. Thank you. Cool. Let's do one more. Uh, okay, hi. so on this next one, I'll let you judge one, three, one. where to enter. Um, okay. Okay. So as you can see, we entered the auto aiming for 60 knots, and then as we got close to the ground, we flared the aircraft backwards and then leveled it out, ready to run onto the ground if needed. In the next one, James lets me decide when to enter the auto, just to get a feel for how far we travel whilst we do it. Authorization, three, two, one, go. Golf Charlie Echo is entering and lining up to eight. Golf Charlie Echo, roger. Slide turn. Heli centre too far, final for the haze. Check, check. Selected. Surface yeah, turn, two, eight, two degrees at one eight knots. Okay. Down. Not too much, not too much. That's it, level. Uh, okay. Oh, beautiful. Golf Charlie Echo is rolling to eight. Happy. Yeah, nice work. So you see, saving it yeah. for the end is where, where you want to be, because it really puts the brakes on there. Okay. Lovely job. So I'm just going to quickly show you another clip of engine failures in the hover taxi, where you basically just need to introduce a load of left pedal to keep the aircraft straight, keep the collective where it is, and then pull the collective just to cushion the landing as you run onto the ground. Little bit lower. Golf Mike Kilo, good morning. Your readability is 5. Runway in use 28, right hand for fixed wing. Okay, QC 9 Now, obviously, having a firing flight is very serious, um, and that requires us to land immediately. Now, once we've identified an engine fire, what we want to do is turn the cabin heater off. Now this stops any smoke or even flames coming into the cockpit from the engine. And then we want to enter an auto rotation just as I've shown you previously. Now, not only is an auto rotation probably the quickest way to get down onto the ground, but if you haven't already, you're going to lose your engine power. Now, what we want to do when we're in the auto rotation heading towards the ground is cut the fuel supply and we want to turn off the fuel pump. Now this will essentially starve the engine of its fuel supply. Now it still lets the engine run, so the engine can burn up all the fuel left in it, but it will starve the fuel supply, obviously, and hopefully starve in any more potential fuel to continue that fire going. If we're above 8,000 feet during all of this, we want to increase our airspeed to 90 knots because that's a quicker way to get down towards the ground. And then we want to perform an auto rotation landing just like normal. Once we're on the ground, we want to pull the rotor brake to stop the rotors as quick as possible. And then when the rotors have stopped, we can exit the aircraft. Now, in the case of engine fires, it might not be very obvious, especially in the early stages, that you have an engine fire. So often the earliest indication of one will be an electronic signal inside the cockpit, whether that's a warning light or your electronic display system. Sometimes this is because the sensors for an engine fire are quite close to the engine. So they could detect a fire before it's really visible that you've got one. Now, a key thing for us to do is when there's an indication of an engine fire is to check and confirm that there is an engine fire because the last thing you want to do is think that there's an engine fire, head towards the ground, cut your engine because you're cutting the fuel supply and do an auto rotation down to the ground, which might not be very safe in the area that you're flying over, only to find out that the reason it said there was an engine fire was because of a faulty sensor. So you want to confirm that there is an engine fire before you go through all of that. Now, moving on to tail rotor control failures. Now, this can be a very, very serious incident, which at very slow speeds does result in the aircraft spinning out of control. Now, this is essentially because when the engine is providing power to the rotor blades, they spin in one direction. But the torque reaction basically means that the aircraft wants to spin in the opposite direction to equal it out. So that's why we have tail rotors 
to push the tail in the opposite direction to counteract that torque reaction, which keeps us heading in the same direction we want to head. Now, in the unfortunate case that we were to lose our tail rotor during flight, we would turn the governor off because that means we then have control of the throttle and we adjust our speed to 70 to 80 knots. Now, as I just mentioned, that keeps us moving forward through the air at a good speed. So we've got a good aerodynamic flow over the tail rotor fin, which will keep us relatively straight moving through the air. Then we find an appropriate surface for a running landing. So after we've picked an approach towards our appropriate surface for a running landing, we then enter the auto rotation. And that is because when the rotor blades aren't being provided power by the engine anymore, there's no torque reaction to spin the aircraft the opposite direction to the rotor blades. So that means we can approach down to the surface, keeping a good amount of forward airspeed to just do a normal auto rotation landing, just like I previously talked about. Now, in the case of the Cabri G2 handbook, most of the emergencies are categorized into three actions and they are to continue flight, to land as soon as possible or soon as practicable, or to land immediately. Now an example of each are as follows. If you were to have a failure of the governor, which is what helps keep your RPM at the appropriate speed, this would be indicated by the blinking blue light on the console. Now, this is categorized as a continue flight because all you have to then do is turn the governor off and manage the engine RPM by yourself by twisting the throttle and continuing flight. Now, there are still some helicopters out there that still don't even have governors. For example, some Enstroms don't have those. So you do fly without a governor. It's just sort of an added luxury. So if that was to fail, then you can continue your flight. So an example of landing as soon as practicable or as soon as possible would be if you were to have an alternator failure. Now, if the alternator in the cabri was to fail, you'd first check that the alternator switch is indeed turned on. And then you check the battery indicator to see if the battery is being charged because you could have an indication of an alternator failure, but it might not have failed. So you check if the battery is being charged or not. If the battery isn't being charged and the alternator has actually failed, then we would switch every bit of non-essential equipment off. So things like lights and possibly even the transponder and things like that. So you're minimizing the amount of electrical drain from the battery. The alternator not charging the battery and the battery cutting out wouldn't cause the engine to work. So this means land as soon as possible. So this means you can make a safe and effective landing at a nearby airfield or an appropriately large field, whatever you decide as pilot in command. And so as we've talked about already, an example of landing immediately would be if you were to have an engine failure or a fire, for example. So it's been a relatively brief insight into how we handle emergencies when flying helicopters, but hopefully you've learned something interesting from it and you understand a little better how we go about emergencies in helicopters. So guys, if you've liked the video, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment to let me know how you thought the video went and any suggestions for future videos. Subscribe to the channel if you're new because then you can keep up to date with all the things that I post in the future. I've got Facebook and Instagram accounts so you can go check them simply under the Micropilot. And hopefully tomorrow I'll be doing my first solo in a helicopter so that video is very soon to follow. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.